back, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Terrible Tile Tuesday. I am your host, Sim Football Critic, and let's get right into it, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get this one done in under 15 minutes. So start the clock. Let's get it going, guys. Now, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to a group that I recently joined on Facebook. It's Black and Gold Pride, guys. Black and Gold Pride. You know, I'll put a link to the description. I mean, uh, a link in the description for that group. I want to give a shout out to them. I just joined them. A lot of great conversation in there. A lot of great people who love the Steelers like we do, guys. So I definitely want to give them a shout out. Let's get right into it, guys. Now, first and foremost, AB and Big Ben were on fire early on fire and it's crazy because it wasn't even really deep passes but they led to deep touchdowns you know you think about how pittsburgh came out the way i like to see them come out all the time i might add against teams you know that have a pretty decent defense particularly a team like baltimore come out firing spread them out and either pass or run from the spread you know formation that's how i would like to see us start Probably need to do that against the Kansas City Chiefs because you want to set some type of tone. You don't want them to know that all you're going to do or all you plan to do is hand it off to a Le'Veon Bell. You got to set it up. You know what I mean? So I think we came out with great tempo and A.B. and Big Ben stung them early. You know, like the, like the title says, the killer bees stung the Miami Dolphins early, early. You know, you get A.B. and Big Ben, great block by Jesse James on the bubble screen. A.B. does the rest. And then, of course, the recognition um, by Big Ben on the slant pattern. Because if you go back and look at that play, you see one of the guys, I believe it was a nickel back, maybe a linebacker. You know, he went out and he played the flats, left A.B. in a one-on-one situation in the slant. Ben reads it, hits him. The rest is history. A.B. still has some speed, guys. Great start. Now, like I always do every week, guys, I'm just going to go down my list. This is how I take notes during the game. So it could be, as far as time period, something that happened early, something that happened later. Just the way I took the notes. Offense, man, they just came out on fire. That was the, my next notation, which I already kind of covered that, you know, with A.B. and Big Ben. Sacks by James Harrison. I mean, the huge sack by James Harrison to take points off of the board for Miami. I mean, the old man is still doing it. Still doing it, but that was clutch because let's not forget, Miami was able to get down the field on us. They had some splash plays, you know, and that's very key. They had some splash plays, which is stuff we still need to keep our eye on in terms of our defense. Got to keep an eye on that because Matt Moore didn't have a, a bad day really passing. You know, he was a, a pretty accurate passer from time to time. Had some inaccurates as well, but he didn't have a too bad of a game. You know what I'm saying? Being a backup guy coming into a playoff game. So the defense, we still need to tighten up a little bit. I'll get into that in a little bit later. But it was a huge sack by James Harrison, creating a fumble, turnover on downs, took the board, you know, points right off of the board. Mike Mitchell comes up with a sack. And I have to admit, guys, I was scared when I saw that formation. I remember telling the guys I was watching the game with, I was like, yo, what is Mike Mitchell doing on the line? You know, it scares me when we do free safety blitzes because if it doesn't get there, our secondary, let's, let's all admit, they're a little shaky at times, it's particularly in the middle of the field. I don't know who was playing in the middle of the field. They probably rotated Sean Davis over. But either way, you look at it, you're probably going to get a man situation somewhere when you bring the free safety to the line and blitz. I was nervous, but the pressure got there. So obviously, Keith Butler or whoever else helped make that call saw something that we all didn't see, and they were confident that the blitz would get there. It got there. It is what it is. Can't be mad about that. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bud Dupree. I mean, just the way Bud Dupree has played since he's come back. And shout out to my guy, Tony. He knows who he is. We always talk about Bud Dupree. I've been telling people, man, you know, we've been concerned with our pass rush. I definitely believe that Bud Dupree is going to be a solidified pass rusher for the Pittsburgh Steelers. As you can see, he gets pressure. He's getting a little better with, you know, bending the edge and getting to the quarterback, something I need Chicolo to do. I think Chicolo will come around maybe next year. Bud Dupree is going to be special. But it's not just that. He shows a little speed. He shows aggressiveness in the, t in the run game, protecting the run. And the hit that he put on Matt Moore, my God. I mean, I guess by league standards, technically, it was a foul because he hit him in the head area, kind of hit him in the chin. But I, I don't care about all of that. To me, it was great to see that aggressiveness. You hate to see somebody get hurt. 
but I love to see guys playing physical. Sometimes you're going to get called for it. It is what it is. But Bud Dupree has shown great flashes since he has come back healthy and has been able to help us here in these playoffs and, you know, later in the season. Good to see that. Now, defense locked down the run game. I mean, <laughs> yo, Jay Ajayi, you know, I know he was feeling himself a little bit before the game. And why not? You know, you put up a deuce on us early in the year. But, you know, you know, you think the defense didn't hear some of the things you were saying, like, you know, let's not forget who we are and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, our defense showed him who they were. Shut him down. He only had 33 yards. And to add insult to injury, he gets injured in the game, which to me, again, I hate to see guys get injured, you know, things that are like career ending or a serious injury. But listen, when I played football, when I was on the defensive side, because I also played offense, when I was on the defensive side, I wanted to inflict some injure in you. What I mean is a, a sore shoulder or something that won't allow you to continue, let you feel the pain. So it was great to see not only did we stop him, but we also injured the guy. You know, you know, nothing major, just, you know, made him get out the game. Like that's that's like the icing on the cake. Shut you down, then put you out the game. So it was beautiful to see. Again, I'm not wishing injury. I'm just saying it was beautiful to see how physical we played the run and even got him up out of there. Outstanding. All right, now, A.B. drop calls Ben's pick. That's what I got here in my notes. Now, I will say this. Ben was on the run. He was scrambling in a bit. You can't always expect guys to be super accurate in that situation, you know, like Aaron Rodgers. And even Ben. Ben is pretty accurate in those situations. But you're going to have times, even Aaron Rodgers, where you have an Aaron pass when you're trying to run and you're stepping up in the pocket. But I have to put the blame on the receiver. You get your hands on it, got to catch it. Those are the rules. And A.B. had his hands on it. And I know it's a generally a tough catch, but it's A.B. You expect him to come down with that. So it is what it is. Minor mishap. A.B. kind of dropped it, went through his hands. It was cold out there. Throws an interception. It is what it is. Can't really put that one on Ben. Now, I'm, I'm moving ahead a little bit. But in the second interception, Ben probably... Let me address that. And I'm like I said, I'm skipping ahead because I see my note down at the bottom. Let me address that because I heard Coach Tomlin say in the press conference why you kept him in the game. And this is why I don't jump to conclusions, guys. I wait to hear what the coaches have to say. If I agree with him, I agree with him. If I don't, I don't. But I understand what he was trying to say in terms of why Ben was still in the game. I mean, you want to keep that cohesion and him being the one handing the ball off. You're expecting to just run the ball. And he's pretty safe as far as not getting injured. Now, it was great to see Coach Tomlin step to the plate. And he said, listen, I made that call on third down, trying to be a little bit aggressive. So don't ask Todd Haley about it on Thursday. I love to see that out of a head coach, somebody who takes charge. And he said, I take the blame for that. Now, here's the twofold. Maybe we shouldn't throw in that situation. Probably not. You know, just hand it off. They're not going to come back anyway. Just hand it off. And if you got a punt, you got a punt. It is what it is. But with him being a little aggressive, that's his right. That's his decision. I can't blame him for that. Second part of that is Ben has to know, throw the ball away. You know, in my opinion, you don't need that first down. If it's not there, just get rid of it. You know, but at the end, at the same time, you have to say this. You don't want a, a quarterback to not be aggressive. You know what I mean? So it could go either way. But I just felt like maybe we shouldn't have called the pass and then second, Maybe Ben shouldn't have tried to fight so much to keep the play alive. And he may not have gotten hit the way he did. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm not even sure if that hit actually was what got him hurt. I think it was Sue kind of landing on him or something like that. But as we all know now, nothing major. He's out of the walking boot. He will be playing. So I'm not overly concerned about that, but I at least have to mention it. All right, next in line here, guys. Bell goes off against the Dolphins. I mean... This is the Le'Veon Bell that we all know he can be when he's healthy. You know, we had the privilege of having him in the playoff game and actually playing. We've had the privilege of him being relatively healthy this entire season with the exception of the uh, suspension. You know, we had him for most of the season healthy, and, and this is what we know he can do. He's just incredible, man. I mean, I remember the, this one play where they showed it where he basically came to a complete stop waited and then shot through the hole i mean it's the the combination of his patience his vision the burst that he has even though he's not a burner 
his strength. I mean, this guy, his receiving skills, He, to me, he is one of the, if not the best running backs in the league, man. It's just, you know, that's what you expect out of a guy like that. But as you're going to praise him, we got to praise the offensive line, which was my next notation. The offensive line is doing a bang job. I mean, even with Ben, even though he was handing it off, when he dropped back to pass, he only got hit, I think they said, only twice. You know, once or twice or something like that. The offensive line has been balling. They've been playing very well here down the stretch. And, it's, and again, it's just, it's just good to see, man. It's good to see when you got all of your components, for the most part, playing together and showing you what they can do. All right, the next thing here, guys, Ryan Shazier. I've been saying it all year. This guy's an animal. He is a monster if he's healthy. Another interception. You know, his versatility with his speed and diagnosing plays. This guy's going to be special, man. I just need, you know, again, I'm going to reiterate him and Sean Davis. I just need them to come around a little bit more with their short tackling. Improve the tackling a little more because sometimes they come in hard, they come in fast, but they don't make the tackle. You know, just, you know, wrap it up a little bit. But these guys are going to be all right. But Shazia is definitely going to be special. All right. Now, I will say this. We definitely need to still work on scoring touchdowns, you know, both red zone and beyond the 30. So I'm going to say just a little bit outside of the red zone. We got to work on getting into the end zone a little more. There's a lot of opportunities with our offense. We're up and down the field, but we got to get touchdowns. You know, the, fur the further we go, if we're going to continue to, you know, go any further, we're going to have to score touchdowns. We can't be playing the field goal game with a lot of these teams, man, you know, in the left in this tournament here. All right. Now we got to definitely do a better job in kick return coverage. I can't even remember the last time. Maybe one of you guys can tell me in the comments, when was the last time that we had a kick return for a touchdown? Or beyond the 50? You know, I know Sammy Coates just had one that was relatively good in Cincinnati, but like before that, when? And we've had numerous guys back there. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the blocking scheme or if it's the returner. I'm starting to think it's the blocking scheme. Because even when Dre Archer was back there with his speed, he couldn't make it happen. I don't know. All right, now the defense overall, guys, is playing very well. That's all I'm going to say. They're playing very well. They're still a little bit shaky. We all know that. We know where we're weak at. But the defense is definitely playing like that bend but don't break type of mentality. Maybe a little bit better than that. We're going to give up some points. We're going to give up some passes. They're not a great defense as of yet, but they have climbed. If I'm not mistaken, in that game, it showed a stat where it said we were the 12th ranked overall defense. That's a step up. So, defense is playing good, man. So, I'm just trying to get through this, guys. I know we're getting close to time. Uh, last couple things here I have here is uh, Lawrence Simmons. Late in the game, Lawrence Simmons with two consecutive sacks. We have to re-sign this guy. I know he's older, but I'm, I'm really feeling like he's going to be like some of those other Steelers, like your Palomar Lues and, you know, your Ike Taylors and guys like that when they know – that they're getting older and they want to remain with the team. I don't think he's going to ask for a ton of money or anything like that. We need to bring Timmons back. Timmons is a catalyst still for that defense. He is playing out of his mind this year. I mean, I'm just loving everything I'm seeing from Lawrence Timmons. He might be an elder guy now in the defense, but we need to bring him back. Him and Shazier, I'm really loving that combination. So I'll end with this, guys. Um, Joy Porter, I, I don't know. All I can say, I don't know the full details, but I will say this, man. You just got to conduct yourself a little better than that. When you know who you are and what it means, particularly in Pittsburgh. I mean, you're in the city where you coach, where you played, where you were a, a phenomenal player. You got to be better than that. Better than that. You know, yeah, lights and eyes are always on you. So, I like, again, I don't know how everything transpired, but we definitely don't need anything like that. But like Tomlin said, it's not going to be a distraction. So it is what it is. And I'll wrap up with this, man. I'm not even going to go too deep into the Kansas City thing. We beat them before. But y'all need to keep in mind, they're going to be us against the Dolphins as far as mentality. They know they got spanked by us. We coming into their house. So it's almost like it's flipping. We are, you know, they have basically, they're us <laughs> like we were to the Dolphins. They're going to be pumped. They're going to be motivated. They feel like they're not the same team. We've definitely got to keep an eye on Kelsey. I know Tomlin said we may, you know, have, you know, may entertain the idea of having Justin Gilbert play him some more like he did in the first game. I would love to see that. Tony, I know you're watching. We would love to see that. But I only got about a minute left here, guys. In Kansas City, 
What we have to do is focus, definitely continue to stop the run. But particularly with Kansas City, we need to watch the middle of the field. Kelsey is going to be a huge component. We know they're going to dink and dunk. We have to be good in special teams in terms of coverage. Tyreek Hill is not playing. That boy is lightning fast. Can't have any hiccups in that situation right there, guys. So I think if we put our nose down, play our ball, I will put our offense against any defense. I think we can win. I think it will be a tough game. But we're going to have to go in there about our business with minimal mistake, if not any mistakes, to pull it off. It's going to be tough playing in Arrowhead. And Kansas City is a good team, man. But we do know we can play with them. That's the thing. We know that. So, again, I'll put my offense against any defense, and hopefully our defense can be bend but don't break. All right, guys? So that's all I got for you this week, man. Hopefully I'm back at you guys next week, smiling like I am now with another victory. And you never know, man. If we go into Kansas City and do that, you never know. You never know. So... So all I got, guys, definitely be sure when you see the screaming face appear here, go ahead and hit that to sub to the channel. Do your boy a favor. And like always, guys, it'll never hurt you to hit that like button. I promise. All right, guys, until next time, here we go. Peace.